Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about session-based authentication in the Django REST framework. So this is actually a combination of three videos from my course called Create APIs with Django. So if you wanna check that out, go to the link in the description below. So here's the video, I hope you enjoy. The last form of authentication that I'll talk about is session authentication. So using session authentication is actually pretty easy once you write the JavaScript, but I have to set up an example so you can see how easy it is. So what I'll do is I'll go to my project and I'll stop the server. And what I'll do is I'll create a new app. So start app and we'll call this front end. So what I wanna do is I want to create an HTML page that has some JavaScript in it that will perform requests to our API that's hosted on the same server. So it's going to use the API, but it needs to be authenticated because by default, there is just no authentication for this. So what I'll do, is I'll set up an example. So let's go over to front end and I'll create a view. And this is going to return just an HTML file. So return uh, render requests, and then we'll have a front end slash index.html. So that would be our template. And then I'll create a templates directory. And inside of that, I'll create a front end directory. And then in here, I'll create the index.html. And then I'll use Emmet to get the scaffolding. And I'll just put um, Ajax example as the header. I'll need to create a urls.py file. So I'll do that now. So urls.py, and we can say from django.urls import path, and then URL patterns is going to be equal to path of nothing. I'll just have this be on the index. It's going to be uh, views.index, and we'll give this the name index as well. And then I'll import views, so from dot import views. And then finally, I need to include this in the URLs. So the URLs are here for our, that's for the API. I need to go to book URLs. So path will be the index and we're going to include uh, front in dot URLs. And finally, we can go back to the settings. So I can close the URLs and I'll just add front in to our list of installed apps. Okay, so we have all of that ready to go. We have the views and I shouldn't have to do anything here. It's just the HTML. So let's uh, make sure this works. We'll start up the server. And then we'll go to the home page. And we see Ajax example. So in the next video, I'll write the simple example in JavaScript, and then we'll actually get to having the authentication work for it. Okay, so because this isn't a JavaScript course, I'm going to breeze through the example here, but just know that it's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the JavaScript function fetch to perform a request to my API. So what I'll do is I'll use fetch, and it's a function and I'm going to pass in the URL. So since it's on the same server, I can just pass in uh, API, so slash API slash book is what I want. And then I can pass in some data, but I don't need any data at the moment. And then I can use that then, and this will give me the results of uh, the requests. So this is just creating a function to handle that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that result and I'm going to convert it to JSON. So response.json. And then I'll use another then. And this time it's going to return data for me. And then in here with the data, I can do something. So since I'll be querying the book, what I can do is I can get a list of the results. So what I can say is for, let's say for R, of, so it's R of something is similar to R in something from Python. So for JavaScript, it's just R of. So R of data dot results. 
And then what I'll do is I'll put the results in a simple div. So what I'll do is I'll create a div here. I'll give an ID of uh, results. And then what I'll do is then I'll say, give me the results. So I'll do it outside the loop. So results uh, equals, uh, we'll call this results div equals uh, document dot get element by ID. So we can get that results div. And then using this, I'll append the text. So uh, results div dot append, and we're going to append r dot title. And then we'll append a space as well, just to space them out. So this is pretty simple. We're going to get the results from the API, and each book has a title. So we have the title here, and it's just going to be put into this div for us. So if you were to try to run this, now let me go to JavaScript, or Firefox, I should say, and run this, and open up the developer tools so we can actually see. So we have the console. If there are any errors, uh, the console will give us errors, and it says data results is undefined. So for some reason, it's not getting data results. So to see this, since we're performing a request to our API, if we go to network, we see here for our get requests on slash API slash book, we get a 401 error, which is an unauthorized error. So this error is happening because there's no authentication being handled. And actually, the authentication is being passed automatically for us, but we can't see it. So just to go back, what I'll do is I'll log out. And if we think about a regular user, so say they're using our app, they're going to log in at some place. So I'll log in again. So Anthony and password one, I hit log in and now I'm in the app. And if you're familiar with how logins work, some cookie is created somewhere. So I have a cookie in my browser and any request that gets performed will automatically take that cookie and send it back. So by default, my cookie is going to be sent back to my server through this API request. So I just need to make it so it accepts this form of authentication. So if I go to settings, all I have to do is go down to default authentication classes. And instead of having the simple jot one, what I'll do is I'll comment this out and I'll just add another one. We'll have uh, default authentication classes. And then we'll have rest framework dot authentication dot session authentication, just like that. So I'll save that and the server will restart. So let's try it again and let's see what happens. So I just refresh the page. And now here I see the names of the book. So agent, order, special, discuss, and catch. And if I were to change the JavaScript to be uh, authors instead of books, we should see the same thing happening. So I'll go back here, I'll refresh. Uh, we see undefined, so the results are probably different. So what we can do is we can go to API authors. We can take a look at the response, and yeah, it's undefined because the authors don't have a title. They have a name. So if I save that as name and then refresh the page, now we see the names of the authors. So Victoria Palmer, Brianna Brown, and so on. So we'll change this back to books. But as you can see, it works right away once I enable session authentication. And this works because of how fetch works. So if you're writing anything with JavaScript, then you're probably familiar with this already because it just happens automatically. But when it comes to post requests, things are slightly more complicated. So I'll talk about how to handle that in the next video. If we want to send post requests, delete requests, put requests, or patch requests, then we need to send a cross-site request forgery token as well. And that doesn't get done by default, unlike the credentials here. So what I'll do is I'll create an example for that. So first, we'll use fetch, and we'll send it to API books, and we'll use the first one as an example. And then I'll just, I don't think I need to do then. What I need to do is just pass the method. So this takes an object of configuration. So the method is going to be, let's say delete, because that one will be really obvious once we do it. 
And if we try to run this, so now it should try to delete the first book when we refresh the page. So I'll go back here. I'll refresh the page. And we see here for books, we get an error because I don't have a book under that one. This should be book singular along with this one. So I'll save it and I'll run it again. Okay, so if we go down to delete, we see that cross site request forgery failed, the token is missing or incorrect. So what we need to do is we need to pass the token. So what Django does for us, if you go to storage here, we see three cookies and one cookie is for the token. So we can actually go inside this cookie and get the cross site request forgery token. And what we want to do is we just want to send that to our API using fetch inside of a header. So what I'll do is I'll bring in a script to make it easy to get the token and I'll just put it up here at the top and then I'll use it. So, so we'll have headers as another argument and then we'll have X CSRF token and then we'll pass in cookies dot get CSRF token. And now if we run this, refresh the page, go to network, we see that it's still incorrect. So let's try logging out and logging in again and restarting the app just to make sure everything goes through. So let's log in. When dealing with cookies and sessions, it can be a little sensitive if you keep one open too long as you make changes. So I just started a new session and now we'll try this. And if it fails here, then we know something's wrong with the code. So I'll run this. We see delete still gets this error. So let's see what the, uh, the headers are. So we have the X and I think I know what it is. So this should be dash instead of underscore. So let's try this again and refresh the page. Okay, so this time we see delete responded with a 204, so that's correct. So these books are in order from lowest primary key to highest. So this should be one, two, three, four, five, but we just deleted one. So if we refresh the page, we see one is gone. It's now order. And if we look down here, we get a 404 for the request on delete now because we've already deleted the first book. So basically, anytime you want to use this approach for authentication, the user has to log in through normal means in Django, and then your API will pass the credentials automatically. You just need to have session authentication enabled in your settings. And if you want to perform post requests, delete requests, or put requests, then you have to create a header with this X-CSRF token, and then you have to pass in the token from the cookie. So it's pretty easy to use. and Basically, if you've already had some JavaScript written, then you don't even have to change the JavaScript because the process takes place inside of Django here. You just have to allow your API to be used with session authentication. So now we cover the three forms of authentication I want to talk about. Next, what I'll do is I'll talk about the authorization.